Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography. Now, we're on to Niger. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm going to find out in two seconds because I forget how it's pronounced. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, yeah. Uh, not sure where this is located either. Don't know much about it. I'm going to find out. Hey, maybe a oh yeah, I just got my uh, ancestry DNA test in the mail today. Woo! So s stay tuned, like in a couple weeks when I get my results back. You got like spit in a tube or something like that. Yeah, you know. Step one, go on here. Step two, spit in a tube, mail it off, get your get your results. So. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be looking forward to doing this. Well, not looking forward to doing. It, I'm gonna spin a tube, mail it back. So, I'll be look. I'll look forward to getting the results back. Hey, maybe I'll maybe I'll have a little bit in the share with me. You know, you never know. So, uh, anyways, hit that like and subscribe button, please, below. And yeah, we are gonna jump right into it. Hope you guys are having a great day. Do do. -do. And yeah, three, two, one, bam. Niger, not, not Nigeria. Nice, yes. Two completely different countries, yeah. equally fascinating. One has skyscrapers and oil fields. The other has uranium and dancing face-painted men that put on a beauty pageant for female judges that get to sleep with the winner that they select. What? Okay. It's time to learn geography. <laughs> no! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Not too many people know too much about Niger. It doesn't pop up on many tourism sites and is usually just a footnote in the books about Africa. Literally in Lonely Planet's book on West Africa, this is all they have on Niger. But for what it's worth, this country is fascinating to say the huh. least, and dare I say it, a top destination if you're exploring the obscure lesser known reaches of the planet. And speaking of the planet, here's the map. Now, if there was any country that exemplified the definition of a Saharan nation, it would probably be either Niger or Mauritania. Remember that episode? Man, one day I want to ride that train. Niger played an important role throughout history, and if you dig deep in the sand, you'll start to understand why. First of all, the country is the largest in West Africa, landlocked, bordered by seven other countries, oh, and makes yeah. up 1.3 million square kilometers or 500,000 square miles. And the shape of the country kind of looks like a chicken drumstick. The country is divided into seven <laughs> regions and one capital district for the capital and largest city, Niamey, located in the southwest. After that, the second largest city is Zinder in the southeast and Maradi in the central south. Speaking of wow. which, about 95% of the population lives in the south, where most of the road networks lie. The largest and least populated of the regions is the massive Agadez region in the north, where only one paved road goes all the way up and stops at the mining town of Arlit. Otherwise, from there, there are only dirt paths through the desert that reach the nearly uninhabited outskirts of the unforgiving northeastern Saharan regions. They extend to the furthest settlement, Madama, a military outpost that patrols the border with Libya and Chad. Otherwise, from Libya, you have only one main road that passes through the Kuru Arkene airstrip that is actually split by the border of both countries, and from there, good luck. Within the country, there are two what? international airports, Niamey's Diori Hamani International and Agadez's Mano Dayak International up north. Currently, the country is in the process of constructing a rail line that will connect to Benin and onwards to the port of Cotonou for cargo transport to the Atlantic Ocean. A station has already been built at Niamey, and future stations are being worked done. Now, aside from some river boundaries in the south, most of the current borders of Niger were kind of arbitrarily drawn between the French and other regional powers during oh. colonial times. Until 1931, Niger actually kind of used to have half of Chad's land, but then it was like, all right, West and Central African colonies, how we doing? We, we hate, hate you. you. Ah, good as usual, I see. Anyways, is there anything you'd like to discuss? <laughs> yeah, now that you mention it, why does Niger get like the entire Tabesti and Eddy Plateau when most of its people are over 2,000 kilometers away? I mean, you drew these lines, what do you expect me to say? Okay, fine, Chad. You're taking over the Aneti area thing. Thank fine, you, but, but we, we still, still hate you. you. Otherwise, if Niger was known wow. for something, it would be kind of like the country with the most remote and difficult to reach landmarks, hidden away in the empty uninhabited deserts with limited access options. I mean, if you zoom in, you can see the UTA Flight 772 crash site monument with no roads leading to it. It's just a monument in the middle of the sand, hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest town. A bit west, what? there used to be one last living tree in the middle of the Tenere <laughs> Desert with no others in a 400 kilometer radius until a drunk driver knocked it over in the 70s, and now they've placed a metallic monument in the tree's honor and that's just the tip of the iceberg if you just okay hold on a second is that true or is it is this, is this like bull because the trees in the middle of nowhere 
what are the odds of some random drunk driver driving into it? Like, if that's serious, that had to be on purpose, right? The one tree in the entire country that's like not even on a road gets hit. And then you got other monuments in the middle of deserts with like no roads leading to it. I'm just, I'm just really curious. Do tourists come there and ask to come is like the middle of a desert to, to see, you know, to see stuff? I'm just curious. I, that'd be pretty amazing if they do, man. Like that's dedication to go see that stuff. So uh, interesting. And now they've placed a metallic monument in the tree's honor. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you decide to visit, some places of interest might include things like this desert caravan town, the Maradi Palace and Grand Bazaar, the National Museum of Niger, the Jado and Jaba city ruins, Agadez Grand Mosque, the Ayoru Hippo Tours, this old cemetery in Gobero, these cave engravings, the Tuareg Festival grounds and markets of Taua, the really difficult to get to lush crop oasis of Timia, Kaure Giraffe Reserve, the Animal Bazaar, of Balayara. Zinder is kind of like the cultural capital of the country with ruins, the Birni Quarter, and the Sultan's Palace. Oh, and there's a national park called W National Park. Yeah, that's just the name W oh, yeah. National Park. It's pretty cool with lots of animals. That, that whole, like, I don't know, that lush place they just said. Didn't that have trees in it? Or is it a bunch of bushes? Forgot to look. Anyways, yeah. Park called W National Park. Yeah, that's just the name W National Park. It's pretty cool with lots of animals and stuff. Three, three. And speaking of nature and animals, this makes the perfect transition into the next segment. The We made USA oh, insurance anyways, for veterans guys, like we're Martin. Ignore this. When a hailstorm hit. Now, Niger sticks out physically because on the surface, it seems kind of desolate, but if you look closer, you'll see all these weird clues that give you a picture on how the area used to look like thousands of years ago before okay. the desert took over. First of all, Niger is one of the hottest countries on earth, often called the frying pan of the world. I mean, if you disregard the chicken drumstick thing, it also kind of looks like a frying pan. Raindrops are said to sometimes evaporate before they even hit the ground. Wow. About 80% of the country is made up of Saharan and Tenere Desert, which by the way holds the Ayer and Tenere Nature Reserves, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the fourth largest nature reserve reserve in the world, the country has three main extinct volcano lava field plateaus, the Jabo Plateau in the northeast, the smaller Zinder Plateau further south, where you can find the tallest peak, Idukal Ntages. Almost the entire country is located in either the Sahara or Sahel zone, which gives them a line of agriculture versus a line of grazing for livestock. This little dangling salient right here in the south of the Tilaberi region is part of the W National Park and is the okay. wettest and greenest area in all of Niger. To the west, you get the longest and most important river of the country, the Niger River, where the country gets its So the National Park is the greenest area, which I'm assuming you got it's National Park. No one can live there. That's got to suck for the people, man. It's like, you know, the greenest, like, most best area to live in is kind of off limits, you know? Because, I mean, kind of like, you know, like a few scattered houses, like tree houses in there, you know, for, I don't know, some kind of lottery. You go in, you can go live in the the best area in the country anyways i mean i guess not the, i'm just saying the, the more lush area in the country than the biggest but you know it's probably the best weather down there you got a green we could be the best area in the country right i'm sure you guys would agree with me right no okay Name from passing through the capital Niamey. The Niger River is strange because it kind of flows in a backwards crescent starting in the Guinea Highlands and then ends in the Gulf of Guinea in Nigeria. This river provides water and irrigation to over a quarter of the entire population. If you zoom in on the Tahua region, you can even see the outline of former flowing river tributaries that irrigated much of the land inland. Otherwise, a series of Guelta or drainage basins can be found all over, about a thousand of them in the country, 175 of which are permanent, fed by underwater aquifers. They provide many mm. outskirt communities with water as well. The largest inland body of water is the northwestern section of Lake Chad, split between four countries, and today it is seeing the effects of desertification and drying up, unfortunately. Uh -oh. Yeah, Niger is quite dry, but they have their way of getting around and adapting. And speaking of dry, it's time for my triple shot of espresso break, which means the one and only Noah takes over this segment. Here, hold this, would you? 
Now, as we mentioned, Nigeria is interesting because long ago, much of it was covered in savanna and grassland before the sands came in. Only about 1% of the land is covered in forests and about 3% is cultivated for farming. This is kind of mind-boggling considering that somewhere around 87% of the workforce is engaged in agriculture and subsistence farming. Now, take into account oh. that they constantly face droughts and desertification, and it's quite a tense situation to say the least. The crops they mostly grow are ground nuts and cotton with a somewhat noticeable livestock trade, mostly with Nigeria. Nonetheless, it's mineral exports that make them the most money money at about 40% of the overall exports. There was even a gold rush when gold was discovered in the Jabo Plateau in 2014. Yeah, you would think the Sahara is just a bunch of useless sand and rocks, but nope. Nonetheless, the Agadez region is a moneymaker, being the fifth largest uranium producer on Earth in the mine close to the town of Arlit. Otherwise, despite the lack of cropland, they still have their own national dishes, which brings us to... Food. First off, most meals start with a staple starch, the most common one being millet. Fish is the most common meat, specifically mackerel. Stews are very common yeah. as well. Otherwise, you have dishes like kilishi, moringa, kola nuts, wache, spice crickets, tatabara, brochettes, fura, og bono, or African bush mango. And of course, like oh, much okay. of West Africa, they have their own version of jollof rice. Yeah, their version, but not the original. <laughs> Excuse me? And speaking of their own versions of things, let's talk about the versions of people, shall we? Here you go. Demographics. Right after this commercial. Three, two, one. Bam. Did not see that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Noah. You're welcome. Okay, so first of all, a person from Niger is called a Nigerian with an Nigerian. E. Add an A and you have Nigerian, which is the next episode after this. Much like almost every African country, the people of Niger come from a slew of ethno-linguistic people groups. Each have their own customs, traditions, tribal affiliation, and story. And the story of Niger gets pretty interesting when you break it down. First of all, the country has about 21 million people and as of 2019 has the world's highest birth rate with about seven births per woman, making them the lowest medium age per population wow. at about 15.4 years. The country is made up of a number of ethnicities, the largest parent group being the Hausa at about 53%, the Zarma Songhai at 21.2%, the Tuareg at about 10.4%, the Fula at about another 10%, and the rest are other groups like the Kanuri Manga, the Tubu, a few Arabs, and others. They use the West African franc as their currency, they use the types A, B, C, D, and E, and F type plug outlets, yeah they use a lot, and they drive on the right side of the road. As a former French colony, of course, French is the official language of administration, it's used mostly to intercommunicate amongst the various people groups. However, there are 10 recognized national languages spoken wow. by the majority of people, Hausa and Zarma Songhai being the most commonly spoken. The vast majority of the country claims to be Muslim. However, much like we discussed in the Mali episode, Islam in Niger is kind of different from what you'd find in other Muslim majority areas, and it's kind of hard to get a real percentage on what classifies as doctrinal versus syncretic Islam. Stemming mostly from the Malachite Sunni branch of jurisprudence, you get a lot of African traditional belief syncretism within the Muslim community. This incorporates a lot of influence from animism like shrines, charms, possession rituals, and so on. The most famous one being the Bori cult. Most women do not wear hijabs and often expose their arms, necks, and legs. Alcohol is allowed. They even have their own local beer brand. Otherwise, Christians make up the majority of the remaining non-Muslim community. The nation is classified as a secular state, although much of the laws stem from Islam. Niger has a lot of history that dates back millennia BC. It's been part of numerous empires and kingdoms and trade routes that predated colonial rule. I mean, today they even have five Five constituent monarchs in five regions. We'll get into that soon. But first, let's kind of break okay. down the largest main people groups: the Hausa, Zarma Songhai, and Toreg and Fula. And here is Random Hannah to explain. All right, let's get this started. The Hausa are the largest ethnic group in Africa. They even have their own Hausa flag. They number around 70 million, 10 million of which, mostly on the southern border, are found in Niger. They are mostly known for being very business oriented, relatively strong in Islamic tradition. They have some very decorative architecture and traditional attire. The Zarma Songhai live mostly in the southwest along the Niger River, and they are known for being the more westernized metropolitan peoples that speak better French and typically work in the service sector. They are famous okay. for the griot performers that tell stories in a musical fashion. They also have interesting traditional huts found close to the capital. The Tuareg are sometimes called the blue people because of the indigo dyes they wear on their clothing. They mostly reside in the more arid parts of the northern Sahara region, and they even have their own ethnic flag. Related to the Berber and other countries, they have a unique millennia-old history of desert culture. Most of them are divided into... I'm sorry to stop at like that I, yeah, I definitely dig the blue because that's my favorite color now you got i bet they stand out like crazy like you can definitely tell 
what tribe they're from or, or whatnot. Just probably seeing them from a mile away, and man. I, you know, I, I guess, you know, kids probably not going to get lost or disappear, you know, very easily. So, nice and bright. I love it. They have a unique millennia-old history of desert culture. Most of them are divided into castes and clans. Some have tribal markings. Men actually wear the veil, whereas women do not. Camels huh. are commonly used for transport, and you can pretty much tell if someone is Tuareg if they are wearing the Cross of Agadez. Finally, the Fulani, or Fula, are the largest nomadic people group on Earth, and Niger has about two million. They mostly inhabit the lower central regions of the country. They have a wide range of colorful festivals festivals, rich ceremonies, and traditions. One of the most famous ones being the Gerawal festival of somewhat taboo tradition in the Wadabe tribe. Men put on layers of makeup and do a performance for the women that get to choose the winner. These women often have permission from their husbands to sleep with the winners in an attempt to have beautiful children. Sometimes wow. social structures across the world are just like that. Yeah, Nat Geo is actually kind of like obsessed with these people. Anyway, Hannah, uh, thank you. Um, it's very interesting. Now, of course, there are many other groups and subgroups of Niger with a plethora of unique languages and customs, but those were kind of like the big four. Otherwise, we cannot gloss over the fact that the country does have some social issues widely known already throughout the world. They only recently abolished slavery in 2003, although oh. the practice of caste-based slavery and human trafficking still is an issue that the country faces. For years, there has been a continuous struggle against Boko Haram, which started in Nigeria, and it has a few factions in Niger. Add on top of that, the overall poverty, illiteracy, and political instability through a series of insurrection and coups you can see how all this kind of puts a struggle on them. Nonetheless, they are still trying, mm. trying to move forward with new modern economic sectors like tourism and resource extraction. It's kind of like, I'm a tourist, can, can I come visit? Oh yeah, no, this, I'm good. You know, don't mind all this, it's just internal issues. Totally fine, come on in, come visit, have a good time. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, history. In the quickest way I can put it, prehistoric era, Trans-Saharan trade route, Songhai Empire, Islam enters. Meanwhile, Hausa kingdoms in the south and Kanem Bornu Empire in the east. Mali Empire takes over. French expedition years. This queen lady fights back. French abolished slavery amongst the Touaregs. France has full colonial rule. Independence. First military regime. Uranium boom. Second Republic. Third Republic. First Touareg rebellion. Second military regime. Fourth Republic and third military regime. Fifth Republic. Second Touareg rebellion. Sixth Republic, Seventh Republic, and here we are today. Yeah, three military regimes and seven republics and two Touareg rebellions. I told you, it's uh, kind of intense. Otherwise, some notable people from Niger or of Nigerian descent might include people like. Full disclaimer, I'm gonna pronounce all these probably wrong. Al Fadi, Nisafatu Musa Adamu, Ismail Eragai Alassan, Bombino, Mustafa Alassane, Abdul Razak Isafu, Musa Mazou, Mamane Fasonga. Yeah, for a place with barely any cultivated land yet fast growing population of over 20 million, you can tell there's something interesting about this place. Let's see how the outside world responds to the uniqueness now, shall we? Yes. Let's see. Now, Niger is the fastest growing country in Africa with the highest birth rate. This means that with limited resources at their disposal, their dependence on foreign interaction is crucial to the very continuity of their nation's future. For one, even though the colonial... Yeah, kind of because, you know, the highest birth rate, but, you know, you know, I guess the schooling's not that great, and, you know, they have the internal conflicts, man. I kind of, kind of feel for the kids on this one, you know? Foreign interaction is crucial to the very continuity of their nation's future. For one, even though the colonial past holds a slight sting in the minds of Nigerians, France is not only their largest import and export partner, especially in the uranium sector, but also still has a cultural connection with Niger. They've adopted a lot of French cuisine, French is the official language used for intercommunication, and many students choose to continue their studies in France. Americans are kind of like the backup default outsider when the French aren't concerned. They've been friendly since independence, and even amidst the political drama, they never cut ties. In 2013, they signed an agreement to allow U.S. bases to operate and test military equipment in their territory, as well as help train the Nigerian military. The U.S. also invests in their economy to some extent. In general, their West African neighbors are the closest friends, but it depends on who you ask. If you ask the Hausa community, they'll probably say Nigeria is their best friend, as many of their Hausa cousins also live in Nigeria. In addition, Ghana and Benin give them access to the ocean. Otherwise, many in the Zarma Songhai community will probably say that Mali and Burkina Faso are the best friends. Not only is business big between them, but they share the same history of empires, challenges in modern society, and to some extent culture. They also share many of the same people groups, and they have a shared dependence on the Niger River. In conclusion, when you look at Niger, first you see, you know, just sand and rocks, but then you see this incredibly fast-growing population. They've gotten this far and kept the colorful traditions alive. Let's see what the future holds for them. Stay tuned. Nigeria!
is coming up next. Okay, wow. Wow. Niger, uh, so yeah, uh, definitely very interesting. Everyone lives uh, towards the south. I just hope, you know, I guess they get the inner struggles, you know, kind of thing. I hope that kind of goes away, you know, because obviously you guys are trying to get away from that. But as long as that internal stuff is still there, I can't see, you know, it's like the country's not going to blossom. So I really hope you guys kind of like, uh, kind of stop that and take care of that and because then you know then you guys can just grow and you know and improve everything and everything will be just awesome you know so anyways hope you guys like this video hope you guys uh that like and subscribe button below and yeah i hope to catch you guys in my future videos do every country in the world a through you know z so uh, uh hopefully if you're farther than the alphabet i'm sorry but i'll get to you eventually but anyways, guys, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in future videos. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I am out of here.